It's only a dog, Fred. Yeah, I know. I love dogs. I have nine at home. But I never bring them up on the moor at this time of the year. Why not? Can you imagine what would happen if a dog was running free and it ran into a brood of grouse or a brood of waders on a windy night? They would get scattered over a big area two or three hundred yards away. The mother's got to spend the next three or four hours calling to them to try to get them back together. And that's when they're very susceptible to predation. Or it might even come a thunderstorm and they'll be washed out. And also a sheep. If a dog chased a sheep for a two or three hundred yards, that sheep's probably pregnant and it could easily miscarry its lambs. Between March and July, the breeding season, dogs should be on a short lead at all times on open moorland. Do you know what a Merlin is, Fred? Do you? Like a magician? <laughs> no, come with me. I'll show you something really special and just how vulnerable ground nesting birds can be. Fred, what's that man doing? Hello, Fred. All nice right. to see you. Yeah, this is a young friend of mine, Adam. Hello, Adam. Oh, it's quite lucky, cos I'm just about to ring these merlins. Right, what I'm about to do is put one of these metal rings onto the leg of the bird. And I'm doing this as part of the British Trust for Ornithology's bird ringing scheme. And people have been ringing birds for, oh, nearly 100 years now to try and find out more information about birds. Each ring has got a, a number on it and an address. So if it, in future the bird is found, you can write to the address and find out more information about the history of the bird. Why do they live here? Right, well, that's a good question. And a lot of it's down to Fred and, and the way he manages the piece of moorland here. The merlins and the red grouse and the curlews that live up here, the golden plover, they're all ground nesting birds and they're all very susceptible to mammal predators such as uh, foxes and weasels and stoats. And Fred controls the numbers of those up here. You know, Fred's a protector of these merlins and the other upland birds that we get uh, around here. Right, we better be on our way, Mark. Nice to see you again, Mark. Thanks and you, for that. Fred, it's been a and pleasure. We'll see you again next year. I hope so. So you don't just look after grouse then, Fred? Oh, absolutely not. 90% of the birds that actually turn up in the spring and the summer are just visitors. They're just coming here really to rear their own young. We have a very high percentage of the nest and golden plover, which come to this country. Now, if this moorland didn't exist, then golden plover wouldn't have anywhere to go. That's why the triple SIs, which means the sites of special scientific interest. Also, of course, it's very important for its insect life and invertebrates, particularly the very beautiful emperor moth. Morning, Neil. How are you? I'm all right, how are you? Not bad. Have you got an assistant? All uh, right, this is Adam. What about giving me M to put this wall on? Yes, please. Thank you. This is Neil, Adam. This is our sheep farmer. He looks after the sheep on here and grazes all the land and also maintains all these walls that you see. I want to keep the sheep on the moor most of the year. And just at certain times, that's when they're lambing or when they're mating, I want to keep them in the fields. So that's why we have to build these walls up. Find some good flat stones. Try that one. Have you seen much, Neil? I've not seen many crows. No. Oh, that's it. Good. I saw a nice brood of grouse when I first came here. Oh, lovely. Well grown? Aye, they were. They fluttered off, yeah. Good. Yeah, they're good grouse. Excellent, ground. yes. Yeah. How's this regeneration plot doing, Fred? It's doing very well, Neil. Very, very well. It's grown. And uh, hopefully in the next couple of years, we'll be able to turn sheep back into it. Good. Anyhow, come on, we'll have to be going. Adam, can I have my gloves back? You're not going to help me to finish it. <laughs> see you, Neil. All right, Adam, see you. Thanks. Fred, why do you carry a gun? 
Well, if I was a road sweeper, I'd carry a brush, wouldn't I? Yeah, but why do you have a gun? Listen. Curlew. There he is, look. Over there. That's just one of a few species of wading birds who come here to nest every spring and summer. There's curlew, golden plover, peewits, dunlin, snipe. And you know what? They all come under the umbrella of my protection, as well as the red grouse. Now, all these wading birds attract a lot of predators, but particularly foxes, stoats, weasels. They're all trying to get their food, so they're all predating all the wading birds. The curlew in particular is very important. He's a real keeper's friend. He'll actually follow your fox all the way across the moor, diving at them, twittering, and telling me that there's something about. That's why I carry this, for the odd opportunity that I get. And also we have the corvids, which is the crow family. Carrying crows, magpies, rooks, jackdaws, they're all egg thieves, but in particular, the carrion crow. He's a real nasty. Now, a pair of carrion crows can account for somewhere up to 200 eggs. Now, that's an awful lot of wading chicks and grouse chicks, so we need to protect them. So it's important that we maintain this balance by controlling the predators. And the way we do it with the corvids is a tool that we call a larsen trap. Can I see a trap? Yeah, come on, there's one over here. a larsen trap. You have to feed and water these, you know, and look after them well. It's much better if we've got a nice healthy decoy that jumps about and attracts other crows. So we feed them and water them every day. What kind of food's that then, Fred? It's an all-in-one dog food, Adam. It's what we feed them on and they thrive on it. Look at how well looked after he is. What kind of bird's that then? It's a carrion crow. And just have a look at his beak. Look at how vicious that is. Now, not only can he kill little chicks and eat lots of eggs, but at this time of the year, and particularly early spring, and they're all having the lambs, and he'll target any weak lamb and he'll be straight there. Especially if a lamb has twins and they give birth to one and move away a little bit to give birth to another, the carrion crows will be waiting. They don't just target dead lambs, live ones, and they'll peck the eyes straight out of them. Some members of the general public tend to think they'd be doing a favour by letting this bird out, where in actual fact they'd be doing a great disservice to maybe a hundred or so wading birds or red grouse. How does a trap work? Come on, I'll show you. What happens is the crow comes round, he sees this one, and he comes in to attack it, and he perches on there and lands there. The door closes and catches them. Do you like to reset it? Yes. 